Let's talk about the new Apple MacBook Air M4. I'm Artis Wright. Apple had a busy product launch week from the iPad to the expected MacBook Air M4 to the unexpected update to the Mac Studio with two new silicons, M4 Max and M3 Ultra that are now in lockstep with each other and not the same generation. I'll make a separate video talking about the Mac Studio, but for now, let's talk about the MacBook Air M4. So M4 brought us a lot of things. Number one, I think it brought us the biggest performance jump from one generation to the next. And that's something that I really enjoy seeing because we don't, we're not always going to see the big performance jump, for example, coming from Intel to the M1. That's not something that's going to happen. So all the other ship generation have been somewhat of an incremental upgrade and we really got a larger performance jump this time. So M4 is a really great generation to consider. The other thing that M4 brought us was 16 gigabytes of memory across the board on all the machines. And that's really awesome. In fact, when Apple did their fall product launch lineup for the MacBook Pros and also the Mac Mini with the M4, the MacBook Air back then was shipping with the M3 silicon and Apple have gone in and upgrade that M3 MacBook Air to 16 gigabyte standard too. So that's something that's really great to see. No more arguments about or discussions rather about should I upgrade the RAM or should I upgrade the SSD in the system. Now you have a good baseline 16 gigabyte and we all benefit from this. This new MacBook Air M4 can also now output to two external displays while the lid is open. So you can now see three display photos. So you can see the display on the MacBook Air and two external displays. In the previous generation, in order for you to see the graphic on the two external displays, you have to close the lid on the machine. So Apple redesigned their display engine, which is something that's really great to see. And we also got a new sky blue color, which is the one that I ordered into the studio. The price for the entry model is lower by $100, and they also have the upgraded center stage camera. Now let's talk about the use cases for the MacBook Air. First, let me talk about Creative Pros. I'm really just going to focus mostly on the Creative Pros because I am a Creative Pro myself and this channel focuses specifically on that. So first of all, if you have a pretty good desktop or a powerful desktop at home, I think a MacBook Air can be a really great companion machine to take on the road, to load pictures in, to do some minor calling, minor editing, exporting. If you're not going to be doing a lot of work on this machine, it is fantastic. However, if you're on the road a lot and it is going to be your only machine, I highly recommend that you look at a MacBook Pro instead, the 14 inch as a starting point. So I would look at either the M4, M4 Pro, or even the M4 Max for that matter, because you're gonna get a much better performance out of it. The reason why I say that is because on these MacBook Air, not this one, this is a MacBook Pro, but on the MacBook Air, it has passive cooling, meaning that there's no active fan on the system. It's just using heat dissipation from the chassis to cool things down. When you really throw in a large number of images at it, what happened is the machine capped the performance of the silicon in order for it not to overheat and burn out, which is a great thing, but it then slows down the performance overall of the machine. So you're gonna be waiting that much longer. And I think that the extra money you can spend to get the MacBook Pro, it's gonna do you much wonders. This also apply to students as well. If you're aspiring to be a pro and you're gonna be working with a lot of images, definitely consider Pro Machine instead of the Air. However, if you're not necessarily a creative pro, you just do very light creative work, then I think the MacBook Air can definitely be a good machine for you to use and consider. The other thing that I also thought about too is that for any photographer nowadays who rely heavily on the AI calling, AI editing everything, and you're not doing a lot of work on the back end part, the MacBook Air can work as a singular machine. However, when you do have to export the file to the client, that's where the bottleneck is going to really come in. So just something to think about there. Also, upload is going to be a little bit slower because some of the upload models to the AI ends up using the Adobe DNG converter to upload the files, converting your raw files into DNG and uploading it. So those processes are going to be a little bit slower as well on the Mac Air compared to the Pro. So just something to think about there. All right. Now, with that said, I want to talk about briefly the 13 and 15 inch performance and what I have seen in the past. In the M2, M3 generation, they have pretty much been really on par with each other within the margin of error. And I feel that this generation is going to be the same unless Apple have gone in and put a fan in the 15 inch model, which I highly doubt they're really going to do that. So pretty much it's a thin light machine that's pretty much silenced, but nonetheless, it doesn't have active cooling, which is another reason why if you are a pro and you need a really good performing machine on the road that will always work, I would look at the MacBook Pro instead. Okay, now moving on to upgrade priorities. Now, I always share this in my video. In order for you to get the performance per dollar spend, first, you want to look at the RAM. Secondly, look at the ship family. This would be the regular M4, M4 Pro, M4 Max, or any of the previous generation applies the same way. 
Then look at SSD size and storage. Lastly, look at the chip variation for the machine. Some of these equations will change a little bit because this is more of a, I would say a starter model for Apple. So for instance, when we look at the MacBook Air at the 13 inch one, it starts with 256 gigabytes of memory, which I don't think is enough. I personally would tell anyone to go with a 512 gigabytes of memory to start out with. So that's my personal thought on that one. So this one, it may be become one of those where it's like, okay, now we have a good baseline memory. Do we need to upgrade the silicon? There's not much by way of upgrading silicon on the MacBook Air. So the only thing is that on the 13 inch model, the entry level model comes with the model that has, or the silicon that has eight GPU. The rest comes with the silicon that has 10 GPU that has been upgraded, including the 15 inch one as well. You can still get the entry model, but that is now the 10 GPU core. To upgrade this GPU, it's going to be $100 to do that. But interestingly enough, if you've gone in and bump it to 512, which is supposed to be $200 more, Apple now bundles the GPU in. So for $100 more, you now get a machine that has 512 gigabytes of memory. I would probably say this is a better value and this probably represents the better value compared to the entry level one. So that's my personal thought on that when it comes to these machines. Really think about your workflow, really think about what you do, because I think choosing the right machine for this is going to really make a difference in that regard. More so than the color or anything else. Uh, one more thing about the entry level machine on this is that it comes with a 30 watt power adapter, but if you upgrade to anything else, you will have the option of the 35 watt dual USB-C or the 70 watt. You can still upgrade to these, by the way, if you have, if you choose the baseline machine, but it comes standard with the 30 watt USB-C power adapter. So just something interesting to note there. Like I said, I have the 512 gigabyte model into the studio for testing and we'll be doing some comparisons there and see how it does. Now, the other thing too is that compared to buying these new, you may be able to get the M3 generation refurbished with 16 gigabytes of memory now, or if you can find them on the used market, it might be a good deal. So this will be one of those things where we actually will put the machine to the testing and see how they perform to get a much better idea and as far as which one may be the one that you want to consider. All right, um, that's it for this MacBook Air M4. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with me. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell. I'm Art, and I thank you for your time.